a lot of times right when you twitch it the second time and you let it start sinking and right before it gets out of sight you just see a big kind of flash and you know you kind of reel down and it's tight and and man that's just such a fun bite so um and again you know with with the uh with the gear that we have that i use uh, you know for float worms it's not a reel it down tight and you know snatch set the hook it is a reel down tight and just pull like a weight, you know, with a, you just pulling your, with your body weight into that fish. So, um, again, great question. Bright, vibrant colors are fantastic option for floating worms. Next, we're going to talk about stick baits. Everybody knows uh, how effective stick baits are. Um, Cinco style baits. Everybody throws them. Everybody knows how, how good they work, but are you truly getting uh, the full potential out of your, your stick baits? Um, I am personally am a fan of the Wacky Rig. I've got it tied on for every tournament that I fish. Um, and again, there, there are certain situations where, you know, a Wacky Rig is better than the next, you know, soft plastic or whatever it may be. Um, but there are definitely times when just a Texas rig, no weight, with no weight, uh, but just a Texas rigged uh, stick bait is, is as good as an option as the Wacky Rig. The Wacky Rig is, again, uh, just, a, just a stick bait rigged uh, right in the middle. Um, again, I'm throwing that on an ALX Rods Soul 7, uh, the same rod that I use my uh, floating worm. Uh, size 30 Abu Garcia Revo, uh, 15 pound P line X braid to 10 to 12 pound. Um, depending on what kind of cover uh, I'm dealing with, I will, I will, you know, kind of play with my line sizes. If I'm throwing it uh, just down kind of straight banks, I'll actually go to an eight pound test if I'm fishing in really clear water. Um, and I'll, but I'll just play with it. Whatever cover that I'm fishing around, uh, I will, I will make the uh, line adjustments accordingly. So eight to twelve pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. Again, that's to a uh, braided line uh, on a spinning reel. For my wacky rig, I'm throwing it anywhere up shallow that there could be a bass. Whether it's a boat dock, whether it's a, a laydown. Again, kind of the same deal with uh, with the floating worm. Whatever there is whether it's a, you know, a tree, a grass edge, a boat dock stump, rock pile, whatever it is. Um, I will take it and I'll throw it as far as I can uh, to the cover. Again, most of the time uh, with a wacky rig, we're fishing relatively clear water. Uh, I, I've never done super well with a, with a wacky rig uh, in dirtier water. And it's just because, you know, in the dirtier water, we don't, we don't have a lot of drawing power uh, with a wacky rig. We're not making vibration, we're not making a lot of noise, so uh, the wacky rig is, a, is more of a clear water technique. So with that being said, we're making super long cast, uh, we're moving down the bank, and what a lot of people don't understand with the wacky rig is they see people fishing with it and they got a spinning rod in their hand and it's kind of like, ah, you know, you're just kind of slow fishing. You just kind of throw it out there and you, and you wait and you, and you just kind of, it's like, it's not fun fishing. But the way that I like to throw my wacky rig is I actually like to keep my trolling motor on high. I like to basically move down the bank like I'm throwing some sort of reaction style bank, uh, but I am picking and choosing my targets to throw my wacky rig at. And once I throw my wacky rig out, it's close to the, to the target, I'll let it sink for four or five seconds, I'll hop it twice, let it sink for another two or three seconds. If I don't have a bite within that time period, I'm reeling up and making my next cast to the next target. And the information Bash University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.